it is uh, 6.31, uh, and it is Monday, July 25th. Um, currently, uh, Lisa Colody is out of the office, but she will be stepping right back in. I would like to open the meeting in regards to the chairman's statement. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording, which will be used to ensure the accurate record of proceeds produced in the minutes of the meeting and all comments are made in open session will be recorded. Um, Gail, are you recording on your own device tonight? Yes, I am as well. Wonderful. Wonderful reference purposes. Okay, and we also have um, Rob from Pembroke Town News, the Division of Quarterful Media. We have PAC TV, if you could introduce yes. yourself. Hi, I'm Jen Kane from uh, PAC TV as a videographer. Uh, Dave Antoine, Government Access Coordinator for PAC TV. Wonderful, thank you all for coming. Um, right now, um, Gary, if you could um, sign payroll, and then we do have in your folder um, I actually have June 13th. In your folder, you have June 27th. Um, but it's the June 13th meeting minutes that we need to approve. The June 27th are there because we they were emailed out several weeks ago and nobody responded. So um, if they were correct or not. Is that a new policy that we're doing where we're responding via email? Indirectly to Carol because we don't know like the changes that are being made. If somebody's already requesting a change. Right. Well, what, what you need to do is, um, and I'm sorry, I want to just go back and say that it was 631. Um, I neglected to start the tape. So I'm going to add that I have read the chairman's um, statement. We have Rob from PAC TV, and we, um, I'm sorry, we have Pembroke, Rob from Pembroke News, and we have Jen from PAC TV here. Um, and um, Gail is recording on her own device. Um, Gary is looking over the salary uh, payroll, which is all set. The other thing that I would like to do is on the June 13th minutes of the meeting, um, that was the one that is the eight pages long. Um, if I could please get someone to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as of June, or dated June 13th, 2016, as written. Do you have a second? Um, yeah, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can I get some clarity on the minutes, though? Did the, did the procedures change into office? It seems the minutes now we're asking to... The minutes um, should be approved by all, that as the statements that are written, um, they are becoming quite lengthy, um, and there are direct direct quotes. Will we, are we, we're, it seems if we're now being asked to approve them via email. If you, re yes, and you need to reply all. So if I am to make a change that, geez, no, this is a misspelling or this is a this, if we reply all, then we all see what's going on and changes that are being made and changes that are not being made. Hi, would you um, care to introduce yourself for the um, public? Uh, the health agent can verify that my name is Floyd Snurrish. <laughs> I will not verify any such thing, sir. <laughs> I cannot assist you in that. My name is Charlie Matthewson. I'm here from WATA. I understand there's some kind of resolution of some of the difficulties you've been having. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. If you'd like to grab that seat, the secretary is not here. Um, so more than happy to have a seat. So I'm going to ask a clarifying question. Okay. So on the minutes, we're now being emailed the minutes. We're all asked to read them and reply all if we have any changes. That just seems in the past we would, the minutes were distributed via email and then we would come and vote on them at the meeting. Correct. But now we're... Yes, and, and so that we can all have clarity and because there there is a lot of discussion yeah. going on, I think that that is the, that's how we need to do it moving on. Okay. 
So last question on the minutes. So if I read through the minutes mm -hmm. and I don't have any comments with respect to making changes, am I still supposed to, are you still would, requesting that I email you back and say I approve? Carol would like you to email and say I approve or I'm all set, Gary, or okay. no, you don't have it right. Okay. This is how right. I interpreted it. Which is fine. That's yep. just something different that mm -hmm. we've done in the past. That's exactly. All. So then what we have then, correspondence-wise, there's a couple of things before we start. Um, June 27th, minutes of the meeting, that's a six-pager. That went out. Um, Carol uh, needs to get a response. I have responded that it is to my liking, but I did it to her face-to-face. -face. So we haven't heard from anybody else, so if we could take a look at that. Um, we will bring that up for our next meeting. I did not respond because it wasn't clear to me what we, if, the, if the procedures had changed mm -hmm. with the minutes. So now that I understand what Perfect. we're doing going forward, Perfect. I will respond accordingly. Okay. And Gail, you good with that? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. The other thing that each of us have in our file is, is that letters were received here at the town hall. One addressed to Carol Murata, the other one addressed to Lisa Cullity directly. Um, in regards to Carolyn Murray's findings with the Attorney General. Uh, basically, the Attorney General, um, and you have copies in your folder, the Attorney General has found that under uh, Ms. Murata's and Ms. Cullity's that there was no, um, nothing against the open meeting law. Um, so currently, right now, these are on file, but I wanted everyone to have a copy of them. Um, you want to announce the app? I'm sorry? Do you want to announce the Yep, and it, as soon as we get through everything else. Um, I do. Um, the other thing in your packet, paper clipped, okay, is a bunch of executive sessions. You are privy to a Selectman's Executive Session of June 15, 2009. Executive Session Selectman's Meeting June 22nd. A email that was received from Carolyn Murray for Monday, July 11th, 2016. And you also have a Board of Health meeting minutes of February 1st, 2010. I consider these correspondences that I am passing on to each one of you. Actually, Gail was kind enough to provide a June 15th, 2009, but I think June 22nd further explains that. Just reading material um, during the next two weeks, if anyone has I would also a concern. Do you want to announce the entrance? I'm not ready for Dan yet. Okay. Um, that's for you, and that's for you, and this is going to be for Mr. Dubuca when you announce him. Okay. Um, if after reading through historical data that is available, if there is any question and anything that you would like to add to the agenda so that we can further continue to rehash, please let me know by an email, my town of Pembroke one is working, and we can put it on the next agenda. So right now, I would like to, um, unless we're about five minutes early, Lisa, do you have anything? No, we have routine septic to consider. Um, you have a variance at 595 Washington Street, which should be taken up as close to 7 p.m. as possible. The regular variances can, can come up as as, as needed. Okay, Dan Tribuco, Selectman um, Dan Tribuco is here to address the board. Um, he did call me personally. Um, and uh, Dan, if you, thanks for coming. Um, Lisa, um, I'm sorry, Gail has handed us, um, it, it's not a public document. Um, it is. It's from town council from the Selectman back in 2007. And it was during the hearing office, and this was the decision from Judge Duarte. That yeah. would be nine years ago? Nine you, years ago. you got to read that. It's from a judge. 
much. And it was requested by the selectmen and the town administrator. Okay, so I just have a question. Why are you bringing this up? Why are you handing this out? Because the judge emphatically states the powers of the board of health. Second page. It's highlighted on the second page. If you read it, you'll understand it. Well, <clears throat> if, you don't, if you don't mind, I'll just begin. If you could. Uh, well, thanks for, ha thanks for having me. I know, Thank um, you, dear. I know the, the board as a whole, and, and Gail in particular, have had some, some questions uh, for the board of selectmen and the town administrator. I wanted to come in here and see if I can uh, answer some of, or all of those questions. And more importantly, what I'd like to do is is uh, help the Board of Health uh, get any past issues resolved, so you folks can you know roll your sleeves up and, and get to work with the issues at hand. So if, uh, if there's anything I can do to to help that along, that's what I'm here for. I brought. Um, I brought some paperwork that I just heard Donna say that you folks have in your packet. I just wanted to make sure if you didn't have it, I, I, I passed along. But everything I think she mentioned is in my packet. But I'll leave it behind just in case it's something that uh, mm -hmm. you didn't have. Um, you know, some of it, some of it is public information. Some of it are uh, executive meetings that may not have been voted on yet, so it may not be for public distribution yet. Uh, one one important thing that's in there is an email from the top page. Uh, talking about because uh, I think the crux of the matter is well I'll let you tell me what the crux of the matter is but there's a, there's a letter from uh, an email from Coppelman Coppelman and Page yes. uh, that's in there that I heard Donna mention uh, but what I'm here for is if, if you folks have questions you, you need to be you need to be heard and uh, I'd like to answer them if I can so if anybody would like to ask a question please feel free why is the selectmen under the authority that they have the hiring and the firing um, authority for the board of health? Uh, for the for the office staff? Yes. Right. Uh, the board of select the board of selectmen is the executive branch. We appoint the town administrator, who is just that. He administers the daily events of the town, and part of those duties. Are to administer the staff of, of all town hall employees. But he does not sign our payroll. He doesn't do the contract with our health agent. He doesn't do the hiring for our department. So. So. But 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 he does administer the administer the day-to-day the -day operations. So just just to I'll let you explain further. But just as a, a broad brush. He's here every day, 40 hours a week plus, dealing with uh, all the folks in town hall, all the personnel, all the personnel matters. Board of selectmen, I'm, I'm part time. I'm here Monday nights, even less in the summertime with our with our schedules. Uh, you folks are here on, on, on Monday nights. Uh, how can we, as elected boards, manage day to day operation? So it makes sense that there's an administrator that handles the day-to-day -day operations and therefore is the, the personnel manager for those folks. But the Board of Health is autonomous. You don't do that with the DPW and they're under the same jurisdiction. So, it's well, let me ask you this. All uh, right. I'm, I'm tr What's the issue? I don't understand. The I'm issue not, I'm not following what the issue is. The issue do you is... Wanna hire, do you want to hire everyone in this office, whether it's the... Um, uh, Lisa or, or anyone else. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not where you're going with this. Help me out. Okay, where I'm going with this is we should be running under the Mass General Law. We're not running under the Mass General Law. The Board of Health is autonomous. We're not supposed to be lending people out. We're supposed to be ru um, ruling what the Mass uh, Department of Health tells us we should be under solely under an autonomous department. So, uh, Scale, I'm sorry, uh, forgive me. Uh, That's okay. I'm, I'm missing something because I, 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 I don't understand what the rub is. I think What's if it? you read that Judge Dwyer's... What are we trying to accomplish, Gail? That's what I'm getting at. I'm I trying to accomplish the fact that this Board of Health is its sole identity. That the Board of Health is autonomous. The Board of Health is to run just the Board of Health. 
we're not supposed to have other people outside governing or managing. We're not, we shouldn't be lending out our employees. I, I, I just that's, well, you may think that, but you, that's not correct. It is correct, and and the ju judge Dwyer. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry but I wish you'd read that. Please. Please help help us out. What are, what are we trying to accomplish? I, I want to I want to help you. You have questions. I would like to go forward. I did not ask for a police detail for the first time I got in here. I did it was not your request. I, as I told you, that was a request. As a matter of fact, they're not here. The reason they're not here is because Carol is not here. That she fine. doesn't want. She doesn't want to not. She wants a police officer present. It is her right. I have so so put that under the, under what do I you still have never told me what I did that warranted that action. Well, uh, two thousand and twelve, let's go back to Free America. You go read that, re listen to it and tell me if you still feel the same. So I'm not going there again. I'm telling you, we have people here. We have a meeting to conduct. Free America. Lawless America. Thank you, whatever it's called. Same thing. Dan is here to help the board move forward. You have questions. You have concerns. We are in 2016. You've just handed me and I want to make point of reference. These are laws. I understand, but you have also passed out to a sitting board a confidential, no, and it's it says bold letters underlined, not a public document. It is. I'm going to tell Can you. Can you? Are I, you allowed to pass I am, this out? I am, and I'm going to tell you I've retained counsel, and counsel tells me yes, I can pass this on from one board member to another. Okay. So are you putting this board on notice that you have counsel? in order for you to perform your duties as a Board of Health member? At this point, Donna, what option do I have? Your options are, let's start talking about things that have to deal with the people of Pembroke. We have ticks, we have Zika, we have um, mosquitoes, what, now I'm getting upset, whatever they carry. We have our public health nurses. We could go into a electric down of our of our whole system and have people in sweltering heat that has to deal with the Pembroke board we have ponds that we have to deal with we have variances and septics and people who want to add on to their property to increase their value this to me I don't care about right now I care about serving the people of Pembroke if you okay, serve if, them you got to serve them by the law what in God's name are we not doing that is against the law? I've been told that our employees belong and they're under the guise of the administrator. Yeah, we live in a town of Pembroke that is strapped for money that we have to cut certain things out of our budget. In this office, I under not right, stupid. I know, but we do not have the help in this board of in this building not to share resources. If I sat as a secretary of this department and I happen to be really, really good with, with the internet and with designing websites, I would be more than happy to throw my hat in and say, you know what, let me, let, let me help work on it. Let me help do this. It's shared. We are a community. Communities. The Board of Health is autonomous. It's not shared. Okay, well, why don't you have your counsel? Get in contact with whoever you would like them to. I'm waiting we'll for ethics to come back, and then we'll move on. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Dan, unless you have anything else to add, I would like to basically state that I really don't know if this board can move forward until the clarification is, in fact, made with what Mrs. McSweeney's concerns are. I don't see any reason why the board can't move forward, because to me right now, this is a done issue. This is, we don't even need to discuss this until ethics comes back. This is not a concern. This shouldn't be brought up at another meeting. This week, Ms. Uh, Kelly Alan Diaz was in here, and he asked you at the beginning of the week to sign up for the MHOA. Um, it hasn't done, been done as of yet. Can you give me an ETA of when that will be I done? I talked to him yesterday. I'm sorry, uh, Friday. So no, 
and it's not scheduled yet. The MHOA um, new board members conference in November. No, I want to be signed up for the website. I want the information. Hang on one second. And no, I saw him late last week. I did not see him at the beginning of the week, and I can confirm that if you'd like with him. So, Donner, if I, if I could. Uh, so, yeah, Lynn, I, I hope you don't mind me addressing you. Uh, not at all. You seem to have a few questions to Linda, but you still. Uh, I, I want to help you with some of the answers, uh, but some of what you're saying keeps falling back keeps falling back to this this like this rabbit hole. And, and I just want to say to you on a personal note, you worked really hard to get elected. You, you ran for several years in a row. You're here now. I'm not sure I'm not, I'm not sure why you want to um, take the opportunity that the voters gave you to, to to go to go down this rabbit hole that you're going down when you can be here and embrace the position that you fought so hard for. That's, that's what I really hope, hope that you will do. Dan, when I first came uh, to my first meeting, within the first 10 minutes, I was read a lot of restrictions on who I could talk to and how I could contact people. I was never welcomed by the board. And this has continued since. I've had police personnel standing here for me, which is totally ridiculous. That is just if Ms. Murata, the secretary, was not comfortable with um, me being on the board, then she certainly had the right not to be in the office. We tape our recordings. For the police personnel, I found it a complete abuse of power and an intimidation factor, and I'm not going to be intimidated. Well, I think it was the opposite. That's what you need to realize. I she was intimidated by you. No, you, Jan, you, you, you have you, to understand that. You have to give me a reason why she was intimidated Because she was by scared me. to death of you. For what reason? That's her own personal business, but oh, I do understand that, But right? you have to divulge that. I'm an elected official now, so if you're going to tell me an employee is calling in police detail because she's afraid of me, address do you have what have the concerns the are. I'm sorry? Do you happen to have uh, I, the records? Which ones are you from the police? Mm -hmm. uh, no, but I can get those from Chief Wong. Oh, Thank I have them. Okay. And um, I rebutted them too because there's several false statements in there. Well, you so then again, it's 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 feelings. It's how people. No, it's not feelings. Feelings, and and it is feelings. Really, it is. So it must have been feelings when I went to my shop steward and I asked her why the municipal fee was being ran on a non-union job. That was feelings when she sent Detective Kane to me the next day. And then I get a police report. In the police report, it said I went to her house two years prior. Welcome to 2008, people of Pembroke. No, welcome to 2010. Okay. Two years prior, I never went. The police never came. You just can't arbitrarily write things. The other police report, uh, I was fired. I was not fired. My, uh, my position was eliminated. There's a big difference between being fired and being eliminated. Um, there were three other false reports in there. So that's a problem with the police station. Lisa, this is not your concern. This is a board's issue right now. I would ask you to please remain quiet. I'll leave until you're done. That's fine with me. Membership um, is sixty dollars a member. I have the applications on here. We can print them out if the board wants to vote. It is sixty dollars a member. <clears throat> so if I, if I can get back to, to to my hope is to I was, I was hoping to answer a lot of the questions that you have here. Uh, I, it, it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to do that tonight. Although I, I, I still like to if I could. Dan, I have no problem going forward. I myself am very tired of this. I have waited to get onto the Board of Health to address the Board of Health issues. I, I really want to know what's going on with our inspections. I want to know, you know, with our stores. Uh, there are, I have several issues. Um, I want to get on the MHOA so I can get into the conferences. Yeah. I've signed up for my compliance. I am very hard trying to get into this, but I can't get into this when it's um, the obvious attention is on me well, from the very first meeting. Can you, can, that are you asking free. my opinion on that? Because uh, I'll, I'll give you my opinion frankly. Uh, you can. Um, I, 
I think that you came in with with um, a, a grudge of sour grapes from when you worked here. And, and if you're asking my opinion, and you can read about that, or we can talk about it. So, uh, uh, whether call it sour grapes or a grudge, and you, you wanted um, uh, retribution is not the right word, but you wanted to write, you wanted to write those perceived wrongs. But that's not your position as a board of health member. You're so much more powerful now than you were then. You should take, you should take the authority that you now have that you fought for three years in a row, I believe it was, to get here. You, you, you made it. Dan, can I tell you, you why it. I ran? Why? Why? For the three years, can I tell you why I ran? Because we're not running under master of the law, and we need to be. You know, you, we need that's, to that's you should really think your logic through on that, because there's... That's a pretty big accusation. It's a very big accusation. It's got a lot of substance behind it, Don. That's great. Um, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm available for, for, for comments. I, I, I know that you knew I was coming here. Yep. I, I was hoping that, that this would be straightforward, a linear conversation, and end up uh, with you folks going, going back to work like you should. I still hope that that'll happen. So, and, and I'm going to chalk this up to uh, you got me here. You wanted to get a few things off your chest uh, in front of the board in an open meeting, which is great. If you do want to contact me, uh, if you don't have my phone number, uh, I'll give it to you now. My email address okay. too. Um, and, and we're not board members together, so the open meeting law. But don't give me any information that would hurt. No, I can't. Meeting. I I know I know the restrictions. In the okay. Would you mind if I write it on your agenda? Not at all. Great. And while you're doing that, Dan, I'd like to, um, <clears throat> on behalf of the board, um, thank you for coming. Um, Greatly appreciate it, and if we can lean into you, I think that's a good idea for all of us. And if you wouldn't mind reporting back to the selectmen, um, I know you have a seven o'clock meeting. Um, let me just see if Lisa is out in the hallway. Dan, yes, I'd also like to echo Donna's sentiments and thank you for coming. Just a clarification question for me. And I saw the agenda early in the week that you were coming. Are you here? You're obviously your selectman. I'm just curious, are you representing the Board of Selectmen or you came on your own as an individual selectman? Or is this uh, I, I set the meeting up as, as an individual selectman, but I spoke to the chairman of the Board of Selectmen and the town administrator to let them know that I was here. And, uh, and they asked that I, I would represent the entire board. Okay. So uh, I'm not just here as an individual citizen, I'm here um, as one member of the board, because um, there, there's at least one member, maybe a couple. I can't think of any more than the one. But the, there's some that, uh, that that made some public statements that I didn't think we were trying to find, go down the list of who would be a, a better liaison. Um, so that that member was out. There's a, a newer member that doesn't have the history, and then there's a couple of other members that, that could have done a capable job. But um, you know, you and I have spoken before. You came to my house mm -hmm. when, you, when you were running. We we yes. spoke about some of your some of your issues. Um, so I had a better background um, and, and maybe a better disp disposition for this. Uh, so that's why I, I came. I appreciate it. And uh, and you know, I'll I'll give you all I'm the information that I can. I'm not here to stir the town. What I'm here to do is to do my job. I know I worked in this in this office for three years. I uh, and. Um, I'm very, very affiliated with state and um, government laws. Right. I came from Medicare, right? I had 20 years experience there. And I know what I know to be a fact. I, I would like things to run properly. Um, this to me, uh, this past week, I decided to reach out for counsel because I just feel that police presence and all the media and everything and the in the news articles, and then selectman Boyle on WATD for a full day um, it has been a little overkill. I understand. I understand. I understand. A little overkill. It, but uh, I will say this: um, I have found that uh, uh, being a public figure, which you are now, you really do need thick skin. Uh, I have. I have been. 
beat up for so many things uh, as a selectman and things that I, I think are right. So you have to have thick skin. And as far as board members uh, not accepting you, not liking you, uh, I know that as well. Uh, but one good thing that we have downstairs at the board of selectmen, we can go toe to toe against each other on one issue, and then the next issue we agree upon Be because totally it's the best. It's the best for the town. Yes. And, and I agree with that. I totally agree that, with that. It, so you, I need to get over things, I found. So hopefully all of you folks find that too. And I'm going to appeal to you again. You worked so hard. You made it. You're here. Right? Make the best of it instead of uh, reaching back. If, if there was something egregious or... It's not so much reaching back, Dan. It's where we are now and being able to move forward. And if we're not moving forward, under the guise of the law, then we're not doing our jobs as elected officials. But see, I don't, under, I, I don't understand that guise of law crap that you're talking about. It's, it's, it's there's, there's something, there's a disconnect from what you're saying and what I'm hearing. Because if it's one thing that was mentioned before, uh, the trash, the, the trash being run by the selectmen, that is not going to change. This board is never going to have that again. I, I, this, this board. Never say never, Mr. Trudeau. Well, <laughs> not, not, on my, not on my watch, because I'll tell you why. The Board of Selectmen and the Town Administrator and our staff have been doing a damn good job. Yes. Five dollars a week to, to take your trash, your recycling, from your curb to the dump. Mm -hmm. Five dollars a week, which also includes capping the landfill, which this board could not do for 17 years. Board of, Selectmen, board of Selectmen did it in 18 months. Mm -hmm. So the Board of Selectmen, well, and not just in this town, Board of Selectmen in, in, the, in the majority of towns run the trash, not the Board of Health. Well, Mike Valenti was instrumental with the land capping. That's why he was That's why he's still there. He, he, he's, a, he's a good guy and he's doing a good job. And he's, he's at a small salary. And guess what? His job's getting sunsetted. His job's getting sunsetted uh, because when he retires, uh, I'm not sure how old he is, but when he does retire, I'm not sure that, that we're going to fill that again uh, in, in that type of in capacity. capacity. Um, someone will have to run the, the operation there, but uh, I don't no, think but it's the, as, as far as the work that needed to be done, it's yeah, the of the landfill, the, the getting rid of the old site, he's, he's the new site. He's a good site, guy and good resource. Sure. Yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, I understand. I understand. There's uh, there's some old wounds that need to heal, but don't let them get in the way. Of I don't want to call them wounds. They're not wounds. The law is not a wound. The, the law is established, and I'm a staunch believer of what the law reads. Okay. What law? For what reason? What purpose? What, what are we looking into? Give me a specific. Okay, I gave you a piece of paper over there from yeah. Judge Dwyer. And if you read the two paragraphs that I gave you, it specifically states that we are not to be split the way that we are. Now, I have been told our employees are under Ed. Okay, why, why, what, yeah, what's the big deal? Why, why can't Ed run the people during the day? I don't understand. What are you going to do? You, you're here on Monday nights. How are you going to run the people? What, what do you, what's your purpose? What's, what's the purpose of it? I don't get the it. The purpose is that it, it, the board was, is not intended to be ran that way. How the could the board of run every the day to day operations? I don't get they it. They did it for uh, Mr. Leary did it for eighteen years. Was he here Mr. full time? Is, yes, he was. Is he a health agent or he is he was. a time Yes, he was. He's a health the, agent. He's paid to be here forty hours a week. We're not paid to do this. Mr. Leary was a health agent. Was here. With took care of the board of health, correct? The dealers right. of the Board of Health, right? Right. And then Mr. Leary went away. Okay? So now, with documentation, Board of Health transferred that responsibility to the town administrator, who's here 40 plus hours a week. Why would it have not, what the existing Board of Health agent was doing prior, why would our Board of Health agent not, our new Board of Health agent not take over those things and responsibilities? Well, I'm sorry, ask that question again? I, 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 for some reason, I think I'm confused, but you just told me that. You have totally confused me. 
Fred that's Leary, you said Fred Leary. Correct. Run, ran the Board of Health. He was a health agent for yep. 18 years. Mm -hmm. And ran the Board of Health. That's he, no, he did the jobs of the health agent mm -hmm. for 18 years, and they've significantly changed. In 18 years, we've all significantly changed. Donna, that's the period of time that he worked here. He got laid off. He was fired in 2009. Well, time out. Time out. Ah. Time out. You, you of all people know that that did not happen. That's not the way it happened. That Mr. Leary was terminated? You know, you were here long enough to know, to just say that that's how it happened and end it is, is incorrect. Don't look at me like you're shocked. No, you, I need you to tell me what you're talking you about. Need, you need to, to get more information because you're going on some false information. What's the false information? We can talk off air. Please. About that. But if that's what you, if that's what you believe happened, you are railing against, raging against the machine for nothing. Because that is not what happened. Mr. Leary was not terminated. I will talk to you off here. Okay, and with that, Dan, thank you very much. I would like to um, move on. There's more to it than meets the eye, Gail. 2595 Washington place. Street. Um, All right, good night. Thanks, everyone. Dan. Thank you, Dan. Kevin here to present. Uh, Kevin actually um, had, Art, can you see if Lisa is out there and um, 595 Washington is up? Um, homeowner and engineer. Ladies room, that would have been inappropriate. Uh, they actually had, he had to um, piggyback against a 725 in Marshfield. So he has left this nice young gentleman. Can you come in and introduce sure. yourself to us? I'm Brian Seelan, Kevin Seelan's son from Seelan Corporation. Brian, thank you. Um, this is on 595 yeah. Washington okay. Street. Oh, yeah. There you go. So we are requesting a variance for our septic field um, leaching chamber system that has been installed um, within 10 feet of the sauna tubes that we've installed for the rear decks at a new condominium project that we built on Route 53 here. Um, we didn't know this rule existed, and we couldn't find anything in the Title V regulations for either the Town of Pembroke's special ones or Title V in general that requires setbacks from sauna tubes. Okay. Do you have, Brian, can you show us the diagram? Yeah, I have a couple pictures here. I can give one to everyone. Okay. Are you an engineer? I am not, no. I did explain that there was a um, 725 in Marshfield meeting that... Um, yeah, the engineer had to go to a, another meeting tonight okay. in Marshfield. But and we were running a little, we ran a little behind, so So let me explain this picture. Okay. Um, the okay. leaching field starts, these are the header pipes here that come out of this deep box that you can see, and it goes parallel with the building like this. So there's a couple, this is the first, sorry, this is okay. the first row right here. Mm -hmm. that starts next to these sauna tubes you can see and then within a couple feet of the chambers. And the engineer says there is nothing that would affect this structurally or the leaching field in any way. And he sent a is, letter. Is this the, um, Brian, is this the first sonar tube? So we're at yes, the end this, point this at a diagonal? Yep. And, and this it's is 10 feet from here? Um, no. No, I think this distance from his first infiltrator to go in is probably about 10 feet. Can we go up for just half a second? Yeah, I'm the, sorry. What is the variance that we're seeking? Because well, we were told that it was required that a sonnet tube be 10 feet from a uh, infiltration system. Okay. And how many feet is this? About, about two feet. About two Ooh. feet. Yeah. But we couldn't, and the engineer couldn't find anything that specifically pointed out sauna tubes or structures similar to them. Ms. Kalidi, can you tell us what that would do? In this situation, hopefully nothing, because it is condoized. Therefore, and forgive me, I don't, I didn't read your association rules, but I'm vaguely familiar with them through talking to your father about them. That 
they're restricted. The, the concern of the board with the policy that everything is 10 feet away, and we will review it, perhaps we should review, we, we talked about reviewing regulations. The problem when you allow a private homeowner to put things, structures, that close to the septic system is they run a far larger opportunity of doing damage to their own septic system, thus causing failures and things down the road. The reason why this would not occur in a condoized situation is the homeowners, when they buy the condo, are not at liberty to change the footprint, do additional constructions, add additional decks, ramps, and other things as a private homeowner might, or use their own equipment to do so. It's under the control of a condo association, meaning any structures or changes, they have to go before the association and receive permission, even if they're going to repair their deck. Therefore, hopefully, the, the theory would be the association would take responsibility where this is a shared septic system. One would not be allowed to randomly do additions or make changes. Am I correct in my understanding? That's quite right, yeah. So with a private homeowner, the concern is always what further damage might they do and inadvertently harm themselves in a condo or an apartment situation. That would be very difficult for someone to do unless, if, forgive me, unless the whole association mm -hmm was completely negligent and not paying attention. The reason this wasn't picked up is on design, the decks um, as proposed were significantly smaller and further away from the septic system. The septic system shifted slightly, um, otherwise this would have been picked up on the design. Uh, forgive me, I pulled out the wrong one. Do you want the as built thing out of that? No, that's, that's, well, as soon as the board accepts it, we'll go ahead and do the as built part. Oh, the as built is Did here. Did you say that the decks were made larger than initially intended? Correct. They're closer. They're closer than indicated on the initial plan submitted. And forgive me as I can't find it. I didn't know it's here. That's the details. How recent are these pictures, Brian? Um, just last week. Okay. I've also so nothing has nothing been done. Has been done. Okay. You'll see the de decks are significantly smaller and further away than the septic system. Um, this indicates 25 feet, so there is give or take 20, uh, over 10 feet between this and the system. This deck is now, this system is now narrower, longer, and pushed up against the decks where it's actually touching um, the sauna tubes for three of those decks. Which again, in a condoized situation, in theory, should never be at harm, but had that been represented on the plan submitted and approved by the board and stamped, um, we would have pointed out that the decks were significantly closer um, to the system than off of the wall. You'll see that this How is the stamp the points. I don't know ten. off the top of my head. Um, each one is, I would say, 10 by 8. eight. Okay. And there's, so, there's two kind of joined next to each other yep. mm -hmm. with a common wall in between them. Yep. Instead of individual, you'll see these do not are not common wall or joint decks. They're actually all separate per unit. Which again is not a problem, except that those sonotubes tubes are right next to the edge of the field. So the one way to resolve it was to ask the board for permission to leave them as they sit, as as built. And these plans were approved in October of 2013. I know that yes. the building second phase is is just underway recently. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's in rough frame construction right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, looking at a single family home, not that we like to govern homeowners, but it is, it's a well documented that you have to be extremely careful when adding on to your primary residence. You will see this is the system as installed, and you can see just how close to those units it is, and that those decks, the deck that sits here and fringes very close. It is just the one deck between the last two units, though, That's if memory correct. serves. So there's about four sono tubes that sit that close. That's it. The rest of the units are not. You'll see that the tanks are all shifted. You saw in the, in the representation before the board, there were individual tanks and individual decks behind every unit. Um, this is not unusual. They shifted all the tanks to in line to feed into the field. Um, but in doing so, that field shifted closer um, to those sono tubes and to those other decks. And that field, you, you don't anticipate that shifting any closer than it already has. It's already, it's settled already in the ground. The Everything's in the ground. It's settled down. to the point where it's going to. Yeah, it's already completed. <coughs> okay. And as condo ownership, they're not allowed, home, homeowners or condo owners are not allowed to do any type of, 
they can't put a pool there, they right. can't extend to their deck, they, you know, they can't, so no, the they can't be even put plants yeah. there. So right. um, they wouldn't be running heavy equipment or doing any other kind of thing that the association would not have to have prior approved. Right. Um, is there any further discussion? No. So, Ms. Kelly, it's your, um, it's your opinion that it would be my opinion, opinion that, that it's that it's safe because it's a condo, because it's protected by the rules of the condo. If it were not, if these were private units that someone could customize or do as they wish, we would have cause to be concerned. You're, you're basing your opinion kind of on a, a little bit of a going forward because there would be some restrictions, aka they can't do anything. Sure, but I would I would like to think as as a responsible and long-standing seller and developer of property, Sealand Corporation, has a pretty strong reputation that. A document is going to be prepared, I would presume, for the condo association about maintenance, repair, protection of Absolutely, the assets yeah. of the buildings, yeah. um, as is usually the case with condos. Is this going to be the same situation if you go to phase three? Uh, there is no phase three. There's no phase three, so yeah. it's just phase one and two. Okay. All right. Well, I'd like to make a motion to accept the variance um, or to accept the fact that the sonar tube placement is in quite close proximity to the um, the field um, so that phase two can continue. Um, do I hear a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Go keep building. Thank you. Paul. You're welcome. Thank you for you your All opposed? No. It's okay. No. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for straightening that out. Thank you, Lisa. No problem. Okay, next up, would you like to step forward and introduce yourself, sir? Good evening. Ben Bastinelli, DPW Commissioner. Hi, Ben. How are you? We're great. Um, thank you for coming and, and visiting with us. Um, it, it's come up um, each time we're asked to um, vote to appoint a drainage commissioner. Um, the question has come before us is, what does a drainage commissioner do and why are we voting along with the selectmen? So um, I think you may or may not know my I counterparts. Do. Okay. I do. Um, just if you could enlighten us and the public, we actually are on um, Town of Pembroke News as well as PAC TV. To begin with, um, as a DPW commissioner and, and part of the group because we work in unison, we all work together. Um, drainage is one of the areas that we uh, pay attention to in the town. And drainage, it's a global term. There's a lot of things that go into drainage. Street runoff, river run runoff any water source of runoff, construction, temporary construction runoff, all falls into drainage and then you have the, the street drains themselves and you have where they go into, into separate drainage areas. The state has an extensive program of drainage rules and regulations, what you can do and what you can't do. On top of that, they have initiated a drainage program statewide which governs how a town needs to control their drainage from going into other municipalities. So as a drainage commissioner, my responsibility is to keep the DPW updated on rules and regulations and changes and so forth that may or may not come to help us to understand and monitor the things that we need to because there is a specific format that I believe it's every two years or three years we have to fill out and give to the state to show them what we've done to comply. Hold on one second. <clears throat> Show them, too. to show them what we've done to comply with the rules and regulations. Uh, another thing that falls under drainage, believe it or not, is street sweeping. We're obligated to 
sweep every street in the town every year. We're obligated to clean all the catch basins every year. We need to keep accurate records that we've done so and where we've left off and where we've picked up so that we can show over a two year or three year period that we have covered the entire town that these things are being done. Sometimes you'll see um, uh, a catch basin, you'll see a paint mark or a crayon mark. That means we've gone through there and that one's been done. So it, it, it gives us a, uh, an accurate tracking of it. Um, we get involved in, and it hasn't been a lot lately, but it's probably picking up again, in construction projects. When, when you touch a, a site that's more than one acre, you have to comply with what we call a SWIP plan. And it's a, it's a temporary drainage plan that's filed with the state that, that shows construction of a retention area so that during construction, when it rains, the idea is to funnel the runoff into this detention area and then slowly discharge it into the local area after it's settled and the sediment has all been settled out of it. So there's a lot that goes into being a drainage commissioner. Um, and as I said, I'm, I'm the designated um, DPW commissioner that sort of focuses on drainage. Um, the other gentlemen focus on water and, and on the DPW itself. But it's not that, that, that we separate ourselves from each other. We're all involved in everything, but it helps us to keep organized because we've got somebody watching that specific area so that we can, we can bring those rules and regs back or we can bring those issues back. And, and we trade, you know, we trade the information in meetings and so forth. How often do you guys meet the drainage commission? The drainage commission meets um, twice a month, uh, excuse me, every other meeting that we have, that the DPW has, every second meeting. I was going to say twice a month, but that's not how it works. It's every second meeting that we have. We don't always meet weekly in the DPW because our issues tend to run more in the winter time and less in the spring and summer. Fall and winter become heavier seasons for us, obviously. So, you know, the winter time, sometimes we at least meet once a week in the winter. And, and in the summertime, maybe once every other week or once every third week, depending on business, if we have information we need to deal with. Okay, so because of the drainage, Board of Health is asked to vote on electing. That's correct. And it's correct. usually someone on the D, existing on the DPW staff that's doing a shared responsibility. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. And, it, and it's, and it, like I said, it's, it, it sounds like, you know, drainage would, it, even when I got involved in it, I didn't realize the magnitude and the breadth that, that it's taken on. But drainage, drainage and water resources are, and, and I know you've heard this, are, are going to be the future of up and coming, I mean, just regulations and figuring it out and so forth. Water is becoming a, 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 a resource that's being looked at very, very hard, as you can tell from some of the stuff that we've had to file with the state in order to to get water and pump water. Fortunately, we've bought properties um, to potentially enhance our, our uh, access to water. So it's helped us with the amount of water we're allowed to pump and use. Can I ask a question? Does this um, go together? I'm trying to put the together. Um, where does the Board of Health follow into this? Is this where we, there's a problem with the water, or is this, where, where does the Board of Health tie into this? What would be our role, I guess, would be my question. That's an interesting question. To be honest with you, if, if, if it doesn't, 
tend to lend it. itself to to public um, safety I issues in terms of of water quality or things well, like when that. We had a few years ago, a few years back, we had um, E. coli in the water. Right. So would that be a case where we would be working with you? Because I know DBW came up, and that's when we had to go out and inform. The yes. The yes. Town. I mean that. That's a. That was. That's a different is that issue. One of that's our tie -ins? A, Yeah. That's a tie-in. On the drainage side, there really isn't much of a tie-in other than, than the assurance that, and if we ran into it, that we were unsure of if we were, if we were causing a pollution downstream or there was something coming from somewhere that we saw and said, you know, this doesn't look right. We should get the board of health to take a look at this, and maybe they need to test it before we let this stuff continue to flow in whatever direction it's running. Um, those would be the kind of tie-in things. But typically, we're dealing with surface runoffs and drainage of, of that nature, and, and um, it's just controlling it and, and dealing with it the way the new rules and regs, and they're always modifying the rules and yes. regs. And there was a previous situation that had come before the board um, where a homeowner had collapsed their, their um, field, their septic yeah. system, and they were actually pumping raw sewerage and water and residue into the catch basin. Right. That's um, the kind of thing so that you that, may not want. That, so no, that would that be the kind a, of thing. Right. That, and yeah, I think you know. that where it's water, it's, it is a valuable resource here within the town of Pembroke yeah. to the people as well as the town. So <coughs> I, I think it makes sense that, you know, um, but what we'd like to do is when um, you are running for re-election or there is another candidate with on the board that is going to be considered We'd love to have that person or you and or whoever come in and, you know, just sure. introduce it. Sure. Say, you know, geez, guys, I'm coming up in front of the board. You know, this is my face. This yep. is who I am. Well, we all know you. It, you know, no, understood. may not understood. be you one day. Right, um, right. So it, it, we really greatly appreciate you taking your own personal time on a Monday oh, night to come on over. That was a wealth of information. No, 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 Thank no. you. Are you the only DPW member that's on the drainage commission? Yes, yes. And that's pretty consistent that there's going to be one. There, there should, there should be one. See, it's it's a, uh, it's an appointed, it's an appointed board, and and the um, the selectmen have a uh, list of categories, but they're pretty, you know, they're astute guys. They know what they're doing. They, they you should have somebody from the DPW there. You should have somebody. You know, Ed Thorne is is part of it from the town side, from the finance side. He's he's there, he's their eyes and ears in the in the situation. And the selectmen appoint; they are the governing body that appoints. That's correct. That position. It, that, the drainage commission. The drainage. Yes, mm -hmm. that's by town bylaw. Mm -hmm. There's a bylaw. Does the bylaw also say that the commissioner for the drainage commission must be the person who came from the DPW? No, 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 no. It talks about it talks about a drainage commission and, and where the people should come from. In, where in recent years in the past, the the, the, the drainage commissioner has come from the DPW. It was you, and prior to you, it was um, Mr. Whitman. Thank you. Right. So that's pretty, uh, has that been consistent? Pretty much, yeah, okay. yeah. Because of because of the dynamics of what it is, like like you know, being in the DPW, we're dealing with these things on a constant basis, and we have we have sort of not that everybody doesn't, but we have the direct access. If I said to you, you know. Here, go look up the drainage rules and regs. It, it would take a couple of hours to read through the government website to find where you need to be. We know where to go. So, so you go there and now you start scouting for the information you need. It's, it's just that kind of thing because we're familiar with it and we deal with it and we deal with the engineers and the civil engineers and, and you know, that we hire and so forth. So we get a lot of feedback during, during discussions about different projects or different things that are going on in the town when we're talking with the engineers, you know, we get into side discussions about drainage, about new rules and regs, and they'll say, oh, by the way, 
there's a new uh, situation coming up or I was in this other town and they had this situation and here's how it was governed and so we get a lot of that so it, it's helpful to have somebody from the DPW because we, we deal with it all the time and we hear about it all the time much like what, what you guys do. I would just want to reiterate what our chair what our chair said I would like to see because in years past We've almost rubber stamped the yep. drainage commissioner, so I'd like to see the commissioner come up here before we actually we vote. Will make, on. We, we, will, we will make note that that. Um, and again, in years past, it was basically a rubber stamp situation. So I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate it. Well, the knowledge is good for us. So no, we absolutely. Know how we're working back and forth together. Absolutely. And yes. thank you. Well, you for have a you have a you know you have a pretty astute agent, and she. Um, She's she's pretty she's versed in in the dirt work as well. Mm -hmm. She's she's uh, she's somebody that her and I have talked many times about different things in, in earth and drainage and so forth. She has a pretty good handle on some of this stuff. Yep. So you're pretty lucky. Yes, we are. Thanks, All right. Ben. Well, Ben, thank you for coming in. We appreciate thank you. it. And and you know if you do have any other questions. Contact me through there. Congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good job. Again. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, moving right along because it's a little after 7.30. Um, we have up next 187 Scusit Street. Um, what do you got for us? This holiday. Variance requested setback from cellar wall to SAS of 20 feet down to 15 feet. It is a Magalone. Um, design. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. There it is. <laughs> very good at what he does. Shane's wonderful. They're all very good at what they do. So the bump out obviously is coming out. Obviously we would want to be 20 feet away from um, this project altogether. And as you can see, this parcel size is just not going to allow it. Um, the road cut extends um, into the people's property on Scusit Street as it does on many major roads. So he's pushed it out to the 10 feet um, set back to the property line as much as he can, but that's going to leave it five feet too close to the home. Mm -hmm. And I believe he has called out for a uh, member uh, membrane, membrane. Uh, in, in that area to avoid any breakout. And that's what that dotted line is? The, da the dot dash. The dot dotted dash. line is the, um, the limit of remove and replace, which is the five feet over dig around a system. Mm -hmm. The dot dash line would indicate the membrane, which is an impervial rubber mat uh, that would go between the septic system and the home and the septic system in this um, slope that would be created and, and the water line to thus protect all of that. Okay. Can you tell us uh, what might be problematic of this if from going from the 20 to 15? In this situation, none because of the membrane. Anytime you take away any of the setbacks, uh, most people think of concrete as a very waterproof substance. And in today's building you know, environment, it is much more waterproof than it is. Um, most people are familiar. You get into older homes in a higher water table area, such as Scusit Street and behind it, Alvern Road. These homes, um, the, the cement is more porous than people think it will actually allow liquid in. So in Title V code, you want to keep these septic systems as far away from cellar walls as you can for the very fact of you don't ever want, obviously, septic material leaching into somebody's basement. When you take a situation like this and you put a rubber membrane, um, think of it very much as putting an above ground pool except in the ground. It just has no bottom on it. It will prevent any side flow of effluent water towards the home and, and basically put an arrestor there. It can't get into the home at that point. Forces it to go down. Correct, instead of towards the home. Right. Does the membrane, and I know we've talked about them over the years, does it have the same life expectancy as the Longer. Set? Longer. It's a rubber. It's a rubber impervious membrane. It's about five mil. It's pretty darn thick. Um, short of being punctured by something, it, it will last longer than the system itself in most cases. And that's the only variance. It's only one variance. Okay. Yeah, it lasts longer than 20. a pool liner. <laughs> yeah. That was no Ten fun. Years. I, I, I got it. That was no. <laughs> that was no. I could make a motion to approve the variances as submitted on 187 Scusit Street. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain? None. That would be interesting, though, to see the detail sheet from the membrane manufacturer and see exactly what it calls out. Doesn't Keeping it look like, don't they use, like, old tire? That's how they make it. Okay. But then every piece of tires. thing, um, you're familiar because your son's in construction. 
there's almost nothing you use in construction that doesn't have a spec sheet that will call out exactly what kind of strength it has, side shear strength, what it's made of, uh, its life expectancy. I'm going to ask if, if Shane or one of them has one, um, if they have a, a manufacturer spec sheet for um, a, a typical membrane so you can read for yourself exactly what's in it and exactly what its life That'd is. That would be nice if you could add that. Membrane. Right, you know what I'm saying? But it, it's cool to have it. It's just not something they'd ever naturally provide to a Board of Health, but they do often give it to the engineers it'll, it'll and the us, It'll give us and the infiltrators and stuff. Yeah. Right. Infiltrators and stuff, they all have spec sheets. All the um, uh, Zabel filters and all that all have spec sheets to them. So I'll see if I can uh, scare some up from some of the engineers. Very dry reading, but nonetheless informative. Okay, next up is 593 Washington Street. Nope, you already did. No. It. That's the deck. Oh, well, wait a minute, we did 595. Yeah, there are two, two there parcels. Were two of them. No, the it's, it, that one did not did, did not encroach. It, it, the two parcels are connected. They're both owned by Kevin Sealing, but Correct. one has the encroachment, one does not. Okay, so 593 is combined. 595 is combined. Yeah, 595. Exactly. Combined. Okay, so that's yeah. okay. Okay, so we're on to 187 Fairwood Drive. Civ analysis. And this is another McGlone design, and that's why we had to use it, because basically when we got deep enough to take a look at the dirt, we were already in the water. Um, so that's not a good thing. So this system, as you can see, is already going to come up. It's going to come up a couple of feet. Home is already sold. It is a pump system. The average age of this neighborhood is mid-60s, just like the previous home you just looked at. Um, so there's no real changing the plumbing. If, if memory serves, is a split-entry home with a uh, bathroom in the basement anyway, so there's no unfortunately no way short of destroying that that uh, bathroom that we could ever um, hope to get this to be a gravity system anyway plus the water table you wouldn't want to do that you want that separation to groundwater I believe it's so the rate gonna have a rise at three to four feet it looks like from its this is its natural topography these dashed lines it looks like this the, the property does drop off it looks like it's just gonna have a little bit of a bump sticking up and a little bit it looks like maybe one more foot enough. on this side so it looks like on the back side it's gonna have about two feet of raise and on the front maybe give or take a foot this natural sort of okay. dip is gonna kind of come up and then it's just gonna fall off a little quicker in the back so I don't think it's gonna it's, to the eye oh, it's not gonna be look, aesthetically aesthetically I think it'll it's gonna look, look nice. better I shouldn't say that if a good installer does it and grades out the property nicely I think it, you are, you're not yeah. gonna see it um, I, I think it will be naked to the to the average eye in the back it'll, it'll be a little more noticeable but there's nothing you can do about the natural topography of the property which sheds this way so but that's good for water you anyway. couldn't get a perk so therefore a sieve analysis correct they've taken that's it that's when they've they take it put it those through those sieves yeah those those okay. many many I, many I'm just yeah. kind of yeah. making yeah. sure that yeah, you can't perk underwater. Well, you can actually. It's called yep. a dewatered perk, and it takes hours and hours. That's what we did up in the horse farm on Cross Street. You'll remember that it took us, what, I was three days in the field trying to get a dewatered perk out of that. That project is now gaining lots of legs. If anyone has time, you may want to sit in on some of this or go to, to some of that, that, that assisted living facility um, for Alzheimer's and um, uh, other um, dementia type patients. It, it, it could be a very interesting facility, and I guess they have one in situate that's very nice and very highly thought of. So could be a tremendous asset for the town as well. So in this situation, that's the best we could do with what we had. Obviously, there's plenty of land. There's no reduction in size. There's no anything else. We just can't change the water, and we can't change the elevation. So mm -hmm. that's what we had to do here. So um, the variance would be to, to accept the use of sieve analysis for this design plan. Any further discussion? Do I hear a motion? Accept a uh, motion to accept the sieve analysis on 187 Fairwood Drive. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nope. Okay. Before we go on to the um, two items for discussion, um, there was left on the table, I want to make sure everybody has this Board of Health Secretary's selection process timeline. Okay. Um, did you grab a copy that was at the end of the table? No. Did you have that? Okay. Gary, for you? I have it, I believe. You, you have one? Copy. Okay. Yep. This is um, for our information only. The standard posting of the position is going out tomorrow, which is the 26th, internally. Then it will be submitted on August 1st for publication. This is the timeline that has been um, devised as well as the attached job description. It is a union position, which will be the position that will replace Carol Murata. Uh, we are looking to have an offer and a candidate selected by September 6th. 
so that that will allow at least two weeks for that new hire to be able to sit with Carol and learn the secretarial position for the Pembroke Board of Health. I have a couple of questions on the timeline, August 8th through the 12th. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about the Board of Health Screening Committee? Um, I knew that Carol, our secretary, was leaving, and uh, at some point this evening I was going to bring up what was going to be the hiring process. So I'm seeing for the first time that there's a screening committee made up of our health agent, the chair, town administrator. I, I thought, I won't say I had an expectation, but I thought that perhaps the three-member board was going to be involved. So now I'm seeing it's just... All the applications are submitted directly, and this is how I understand it. I've never been around for a secretarial hire. Um, that the applications will be received by the Selectman's office during 8, August 8th through 12th. Those will be reviewed by the screening committee, which comprises of the health agent, the Board of Health chairperson, and the town administrator. Then what will happen is the preliminary screening. Um, all the submissions are due by the 19th and will be preliminary screened by the Screening Commission. Then we go on to the 22nd through the 26th. First meeting to be held this week to qualify. I just actually... That's okay. Right My question is less we about going, the timeline yep. and more about the, the formation of the Screening Committee. I'd like to learn a little bit more about why the board, the three-member board, isn't involved as opposed to just town administrator, health agent, and the current chair. So maybe that's not something you can speak to. I understand. Because this I, was given to me, this was left here by the town, the uh, Sabrina Chilcock. Okay. Can I state to you how this, uh, how I was hired as far as um, the secretary collected the resumes? and the board reviewed the resumes and then the board cut it down to interviews. And, and, and that was the way it used to be done. This is the way they are doing it now. So if you'd like to add that to your list. Um, and again, if you'd like to speak with Ed Dorn or Sabrina Chilcott, maybe they can explain it. I know that it will be, the applications will be split down, and I have requested that we, as a board, interview the applicants that have been screened, that come before, that are applying for the position, and we will interview them. Oh, okay, now I'm not, we're that's going, not clear to me, I didn't see yeah, that, that. We're not going to go through 25 applications as a board. What concerned me was that the board as a group, it didn't appear, and maybe I'm missing something, I'm looking at this quickly, it didn't appear to me that the board was involved in any way, shape, or form, but you're saying beyond the screening committee, who will screen down the resumes, but then is it your understanding the board? It is my understanding of what I requested to this morning, or early, late, at, late morning when I was in here, was is that the screening commission be put into place, but that I was reserving the right, and now I'm on statement, that the three-member board will then interview the final candidates. Where is that? I don't, I'm, I'm missing that, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm oh. not reading. Oh, oh it's sorry. Not here. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, it's not on here. So it's your understanding. It is my understanding that that is how my request went in today. Okay. But it did not translate onto this because okay. these were dropped right before 6 30. Okay. and i just put them in a pile and handed them out hypothetical mm -hmm. and i'm just doing this for numbers illustration purposes only mm -hmm. you get 25 qualified candidates yep. completely qualified mm -hmm. screen, do you have any idea what the screening committee might screen it down to so if you got a whole boatload of qualified candidates. How many candidates might the board, the three-member board, expect to interview? I would say that they usually narrow it down to five. Three. Yeah, anywhere between three and five. 
I mean, you can't. We can't and possibly if interview. Yeah, if you don't get a good good read out of the three, you can pick the other another three and then go back to the and next. go back to the drawing board. But but I would think that this would be a it would come very, down to three candidates. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. And I'll probably talk to Mr. Thorne. I I, I don't have concerns, but I'd like to hear a little bit more about the screening committee because this was something I was interested in. Okay, perfect. So this, what, what the, our hope and what our, the, the plan that I see moving forward is, is that the position needs to be filled. Um, we need to get legal notice in the paper. We need to allow it to go internally then out to publication. Um, and that secretary has a lot to learn. I know that um, two weeks is felt that would be enough time to be able to transfer over information. I know a lot of it is already taken care of and in writing. So this is just for your information. Um, the other thing that got added um, was Gary actually went to the last selectman's meeting and I also, because the minutes of those meeting, um, Gary, were not available yet from um, the Selectman's office, we have an email that kind of breaks down, number one, the medical marijuana yeah. uh, dispensary, which was Green Harbor Dispensary. Now that was um, thrown out by the Selectman. That right? was, because they were not licensed by the Commonwealth, and okay. there is um, three steps. Um, and they were denied. Well, can you tell me what the three steps are, Donna? Uh, the license? We, I do not know for the me medical marijuana. It says they are not licensed by the Commonwealth. Step three in the licensing process, I believe this is through the Department of Public Health, is to obtain letters of non-opposition. This actually is in your packet. Yeah. Okay, so you, okay. you have it. It's a very complicated, well, Mm. It's a cumbersome process, and there were there are three folks that made a presentation before the Board of Selectmen. What they were there for, they weren't looking to approval to open up a dispensary in Pembroke. They were looking for the Board of Selectmen, you just alluded to it. They were looking for the Board of Selectmen to vote and give approval, give, give, I'm using the wrong phrase, but give approval that they would not oppose. So they were... The Green Harvest Dispensary was looking for a letter that the selectmen would issue of non opposition. Uh, thank you, non opposition. Mm -hmm. So that's a law that the state requires. So any medical marijuana dispensary that wants to open up in any town, maybe not the first step, but one of the very early steps is they must go before the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. and they must get that letter of non opposition. So there was three presentations made by Green Harvest Dispensary, yep. and then there was the vote by the board, and they voted three to, three two, to two against yes. giving. Yeah. Um, and the chief of police spoke, um, a few folks who spoke, and they voted three to two. You and know, I wouldn't say, and, and I don't want to speak for Green Harbors, I don't, I don't want to pretend to be an expert on me medical marijuana dispensaries, but, you know, Green Harbors or any other medical, dis mar medical marijuana dispensary could try to come back to the town. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something, you know, I don't know if we have to be discussing it each and every week, but it's something that ultimately if the town does ever decide to give a letter of non-opposition, it will eventually Absolutely. We will be involved. And it says here after um, they may seek to approach and survey land for a site in the future um, for committees in, in which they may seek. So it says there is no site no company and no offer of any medical marijuana dispensary to enter Pembroke as of this date. Yep. So it's kind of been it's thrown limbo. out there. You know, I, I know this is something that's going to be coming up again and again. Um, but for now, it's a mute point, yep. um, which I think, you know, they made their vote. Um, do you have anything to add, State Guide, to that? Thank you. It's the state website at the and top as well as state guidelines for the medical marijuana program, yes. which will go along with that. Um, and then the dog bite um, issue. Um, when questioned, um, I brought it up. 
mm -hmm. who was actually a couple, not a married couple, but a male and a female. They were a couple. They don't live in the town of Pembroke. Mm -hmm. And they, were his, they have a relative, I believe the male has a relative who lives in Pembroke. So he, they were bringing the dog to Pembroke on a fairly regular basis, and the dog had bitten, uh, I believe, another dog, and, and also, I might be wrong, I think a, a human. So he was before the board. The reason I wanted to put it on the agenda, and this was fit for our health agent, I was hoping that you could add a little clarity because Mr. Hart was there, and I know that I think back to the farm animal scale before you were on the board. Uh, you love his name, Chew. Um, yeah, true. So we were very involved in what to do with Chew. And as I was sitting at the selectmen's meeting, I was wondering what prep precipitous that caused the dog bite issue to go before the Board of Selectmen as opposed to the health agent, or sure. excuse me, the Board of Health. Mass uh, general law for state statutes for dogs and viciousness hearings always appear at the recommendation of the dog officer and always before the Board of Selectmen for a dangerousness hearing. The Board of Health is involved in any kind of animal bite or strike as we call it because of the possible uh, continuation of disease. In the situation of this dog, this dog is a licensed dog in the town of Carver, so it technically is very little jurisdiction from this board. Um, the only reason I was primarily involved was to make sure the dog was vaccinated, which it is. And um, if you would, it was more of a, a, a people management situation. This dog had bit approximately two and a half years ago and then attacked another dog. A human was not bit as a part of this attack. Um, I think a human was scratched in, in extricating the dogs from, from fighting with one another. Um, so in this particular situation, it was a dog on dog and there were some high level of emotions understandably from people that were both involved and witnessed this and um, Mr. Hart does not maintain office hours in this town hall so when they came in I serve as a natural um, go-between if you would because I work with him so closely on animals, animal bites, strikes, loose animals, monitoring of disease that um, I ended up working with these people. Mr. Hart ended up coming in meeting with them. We all discussed what had occurred what the legal rights are of the town of Pembroke in, in, in this situation, very little. And my, my understanding is the dog is not coming back to Pembroke, both in agreement of the Board of Selectmen as well as agree, agreement of the owners that they're going to keep the dog in Carver and it's not going to come to Pembroke where it has caused some issues. So when you say we all discussed, obviously you're including... Myself, the dog officer, Mr. Thorne, Ms. Chilcott was there as well as some people that were involved with the incident that were upset and looking, looking for some closure and looking for some information. Can you at least give me the area that this took place? On uh, Gurney Street. Gurney? Gurney. I'm, I'm not confused. I'm looking for clarity. So sure. when there's a dog bite issue, you will I am always involved. You're always involved, but yet it's going to go, if it does have to go before a board, it's going to go before the Board of Selectmen. Correct. Not the Board of Health. Correct. We handle any kind of disease cases. You may remember we did have the state reach out to us to track down a set of uh, sick baby goats that unfortunately did have to be put down. If for some reason was someone was non-compliant in taking care of a disease-infected animal, that would appear before this board because the number one threat would be the disease, not dangerousness. Dangerousness of dogs comes under um, boards of selectmen and, and police matters. That's why they appeal to the board of selectmen. Thank you. You're welcome. But anytime there is a bite, I am always at least peripherally involved to some degree. Okay, so I'm going to send this back to um, Sabrina Chilcott and get that changed. I've added, um, how are we doing with um, the mosquitoes you said it's starting to... We have our first positive triple E, but as of right now, Pembroke remains in low status. So right now we are not high, but they have found their first positive triple E mosquito in Massachusetts. Well, okay, in Massachusetts, yes. but not in Pembroke. But not in Pembroke, okay. Not in our immediate area. West End, wasn't it? I believe so, yeah. It was a, it was a uh, suburb town. Yeah. yeah. And then I included this that was in the local paper, yep. Patriot Ledger, in regards to the um, ticks. And ticks. Lime. Lime in Paswana virus. Yes. If I'm saying it correctly, which yes. is carried by deer ticks. Um, okay, so if anybody has anything else they want to add to the agenda for um, our next meeting, which will be August. August 8th. August 8th. We will be seeing our friends from Wind River again on August 8th. I have Wonderful. a Wonderful. I have a letter that is. Yeah. And so. I also have a letter that's coming. Um, uh, could you just tell me what's. Street? Seven Andrew. 
Oh, okay. I have another one, which is um, I have another complaint that down I down around the corner in a development. Um, that I have one drafting for Adam's ad. I do it. not know if they want to come in or not. They have not made it clear if they intend to bring their complaint forward. Yep. Seven Andrew has made it absolutely clear that she will be here with her complaint. Okay. Um, you said August eighth. August eighth is okay, two we weeks. Possibly, um, it's two weeks. Huh? Yep. I am not going to be around. Yeah, I'm you're going to be on vacation, right? My husband's birthday. Okay. So he has to go away. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, well, that'll throw us off until... Yeah, unless you want to meet with us. Okay. Um, Do we throw you to the 15th? Uh, then what happened? Well, well, then can we go? Um, I can't see that. No problem. That, but can we go to that? Absolutely can. Thank you so much. Um, so if we do the 15th, then the 29th is that's not the long weekend. Uh, no, it is not. No, um, it will be September yet. Yeah, September 5th. I'm not asking you to, but could you potentially phone in? Are you going to be on? Potentially well, vote in. <laughs> well, usually we don't right, change yes. the dates right. of the meetings. I mean, right. we try to stay consistent. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we canceled the last time because that was a vote that we made. Um, as of right now, this is the only agenda item coming up. Wind I don't River. know about yours. I mean, I think Wind River upset. is extremely important. It's extremely important, but I don't I think any of it's time sensitive. None of it is time sensitive. It, mm -hmm. All the issues that I am aware of are over and done. The people are just looking for answers from Wind River of why certain things occurred. So what is is in other words in other words if you put Eric Wheeler to, coming in I don't know I have not been able to reach him I have three calls into him and I don't know why but he has not returned is the onus really on the family at this point of going after Wind River or is it yes and a no board of health yes and no and I'll explain the, the situations all three are different um, all three of them should concern the board yes they are all conflicts between the service provided and the homeowner however. One of them involves Wind River trying to tell a homeowner to put additives into their septic system, which is specifically against the rules in right. Pembroke. We do not allow additives in septic systems. Um, one is certainly a questionable business practice. They were advised to buy and install a septic filter onto a tight tank, mm -hmm. which will not work, of course. Um, and one was where the woman has a 1,500 gallon septic tank and had 2,500 gallons and was charged 2,500 gallons of pump and removal. Yes, she has a pump chamber separate from that, but that was never uncovered or opened. There's one hole in her ground where the filter was, where it was pumped and cleaned, and she was charged 20 And the person, the resident that reached out to me was additive, trying to be sold an additive, and something else, which isn't one of the ones that you've mentioned, and I asked her to please put that in writing directly to me. So. Um, you know, we can put it off, we can change. Having said all that, none of this is time sensitive. I mean, these are right. practices that whether, or, and here's the thing, the board doesn't have to get involved in that. I'll be, I'll be really honest. No, this is a business practice. However, I'll now flip the coin. This board licenses whoever does business in this town. Okay. You cannot pump a septic system. You cannot be a septic um, Title V inspector. You cannot work on a septic system in the town of Pembroke without a license from this board. I believe that's why these particular homeowners are reaching out to this board and basically saying, why are these people licensed if this is what they're what they're doing and representing Wind River has to been us? a problem for many many years. Yep. And we we actually had Eric Mueller come in. Um, you know, we know that you know Danny and he stated, Smith and he stated and, he was our contact people. And yeah, so um, I I'm just curious, is he coming in? Would he be coming in front of the board? Are they sending somebody else? I have no else? idea. Eric Mueller is working for Wind River. Yes. yes. He's, he's sold I know he sold his. He's been working them. for them since he sold his business to them. Yes. Really? I am. And I Dan Smith that. sold it. There's a, two septic, two really great septic um, uh, pumping or Title Five guys. Um, yeah. He, Dan got out of the pumping. I know he got out of the pumping. So um, I don't know. It's up for discussion. Okay. We've got um, um, August eighth. Um, but right now, that is the only item that is coming up. So you, so as a board, you, you let me know because I can phone in. I'm going to be up in Lake Winnipesaukee. Oh, my neck of the woods. But I, I need to get to an area that my phone works. Good luck. <laughs> which, which, 
I won't ask what town on, on, on TV. Um, <laughs> I, I, thank I, you. I think we should stay with the 8th. I, I think in my time on the board, we haven't moved too many meetings. And I, I think we should, just my own, I think we should be consistent. That's my own two cents. I don't have a problem with that. Um, if you if you can phone in, um, we'll start right at six thirty. Okay. We'll have let's why don't we schedule plan to schedule at six forty five, okay. public uh, meeting public hearing. Um, I want somebody with authority to please come in front of the board because if we've got another. <coughs> 1,500 gallon tank and they're saying they're taking away 2,500 gallons of water, somebody's got to do the math for me. Um, and it, this keeps coming up and, and, and additive being put in, you know, no. So, um, well, basically they're stealing from the residents. They are and, and, and they, they don't, and, and you know, the residents are and trying to protect themselves but in essence, they're they're not so. And then um, before that, next week, if you could all please um, get back to Carol in regards to the minutes of the meeting of June 27th. You should all have them in your email. I printed them. I haven't read them. Perfect. For the next meeting, also then I will have all these memberships printed out with the associated costs for the vote for it to vote on for memberships. Okay. That's. Good reading material. Um, after reading through all of this, if anybody wants to reach out to me in regards to adding to a future agenda, I'm sure this will be talking about it more. Okay. Okay. And with that being said, if there is no further discussion, can I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, make a motion to adjourn. It is 8:02. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No. No. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Good job, everybody.